Good morning, folks. This is Soho Lasco C3. Set your eyes on the bottom right of the frames about 4 o'clock. We've got Bruce Gary, Tony Phillips, and Matthew Knight all agreeing Comet Ison is not dead. Forget the experts, though. You don't need them today. You can watch on the fleet. Ison has entered the Soho Lasco C3 beautifully, much better than it looked on stereos. Remember, tomorrow at 12.15 p.m. Eastern Time, right at lunch, we're pre-gaming Thanksgiving with a Google Plus Hangout to watch Ison's Perihelion live on SDO together. We'll start with a recap of everything we know up till now and then we'll watch it slingshot around the sun. Folks, the latest Gozar instrument is cleared for installation. Can't believe we still have two years to wait for that beauty to fly to the heavens. Good article out of New Zealand here discussing why the earthquakes felt there feel more powerful than usual. Top recommendation for locals. Last 48 hours of the eastern U.S. here. Now let's slow that down and pull the Goes Media movie with color background. It's 19 degrees Fahrenheit outside my door and there's 3 inches of snow on the ground, but Columbus, Ohio appears to have gotten lucky compared to my former hometown of Pittsburgh. One thing about a large snowstorm blanketing the skies over this large of an area is that if a major fireball, say, were to come, nobody would be able to see it. That appears to be what happened. Flashes illuminated the clouds, booms could be heard for hundreds of miles, and in some places locals ran outside fearing earthquakes. We're going to keep it with the RSOE and head to South Africa. We have a mass bird die-off, but this time we know the cause. It's an intentional poisoning and beheading. Some locals apparently believe the brains of those birds bring good fortune. Trying not to throw up. Buoy in event mode near South Bali, Indonesia, the most active volcanoes in the world, not a major jolt, but right next to the now missing buoy which starred in disturbance under the ocean. If you are unfamiliar, I'd Google that today. Top weather watch does remain for the Indian coastlines. Lahar approaches with a full tank of gas. Solar wind elevations identified last night trailed off nicely and the stability is absolute in our magnetic field. Then we come to the X-ray flux. No solar flaring. And if you just look at the departing groups, you can't expect that to change. But look at the last 36 hours of the southeastern quadrant of the Earth-facing disk. Remember east and west are flipped on the sun? Look at these developing groups. I see separated but morphing magnetics that beg to start mixing today. And that's even before you come to the limb and see the beasts cresting now. The air classifiers at NOAA, the double positive lead indicates that's twin sister spots cresting together, not one big one. The northern departing coronal hole strengthened while the equatorial bit appears much weaker. This occurred as the larger magnetic fields began to close up even more tightly above that opening. With that said, Middle East moderate uptick is all we've seen for quakes since the field closed after the seven pointer down south. Shots of our star and the weather to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.